Hello there again, everyone. Welcome back to King's Quest 6. I am 6 f Cyrus with Engage Gamers. We are going to... Alexander pulls out his magic map. The Land of Wonder. I mean, the Isle of Wonder. Alexander you know. Alexander has a strange pulling sensation. <laughs> oh, that sound is so amusing. That sound. Yeah. Mm. It is time for us to return to the Isle of Wonder. We have but one thing to do here. One. We will not be here long. Ah. Ah. Let us speak again. How are you finding your new surroundings, Rotten? Uh, Mr. Tomato? Can't you see I'm snoozing? All right, you're done good. Now, go play in the street or something. Yeah. <laughs> the cranky stick in the mud is sleeping now, and waking him up would be rather pointless. There's no reason to disturb Bump on a Log's peaceful nap. <laughs> My dear tree, is it true that your bark is worse than your bite? <laughs> Ah, uh, but there is no one we can speak to here. I wished to hear the Rotten Tomatoes speech for amusement. Ah, but there is a bottle here. Alexander picks up the bottle. We will not worry about this for now. spend her royal time contemplating something else. The lump of coal shall be sent to the castle of the crown under my name. And that's all there is to it. No, it shan't. Yes, it shall. If the coal is sent in your name, I shall royally decree a ban on all red on this isle. You do. And I shall royally decree that white shall be henceforth used for all mopping up of cabbage stew. You wouldn't dare! Oh, wouldn't I? <coughs> oh, it's you! Have you thought of any more of those brilliant ideas of yours? The Red Queen already has a lump of I found the two of you another lump of coal, so that you can stop fighting over the one you have. Oh, well, let me see! A lump of coal! And what a beauty it is, too! Oh, marvelous! Now we can stop fighting, sister. Your Highness can just keep the old lump of coal, and I'll take this new one. Quite right. That settles everything. As a token of our endless esteem and royal favor, please accept this magnificent and truly incredible spoiled egg. Uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he was rather eloquent. Let me see that lump of coal, your highness. About that. It is a beauty, isn't it? Why? It's bigger than my lump of coal. Let me have it immediately. Over my dead body, your highness. It's my lump of coal. And it is indeed larger and much grander. Just look at that sheen. I demand you exchange with me immediately. <laughs> yes, Alexander. It seems we cannot please them all. We must now henceforth leave this isle. Never to return again, I'm afraid. I have also learned that I will probably be able to use my secondary, I, my tertiary, no, even my first idea. Third level idea, first idea. My goodness, I am rather unable to speak. <laughs> Where is it that we go now? We went back. We did that. 
I'm sorry, I have to pre-use my notes here for a second. This is one of the reasons why I'm glad I'm able to switch between windows, like the, the mouse is here and then it's off window and you can kind of see where it went, but not what it's doing now. It's been useful for this in particular because this game is ridiculous. We are done with the aisle, that aisle. Oh yes, we must go and see Cassini. Alexander pulls up. Don't talk about it. Just do it. We are returning to the crown of the aisle. Alexander feels a strange aisle of the cr crown of the aisle. Good job, Steve. I may have played some <laughs> block party before this uh, on a weeknight even, and been able to drink with some friends. So that might be why I'm just a little off. I'm doing my best though, and I feel like it's all right. So in the comments below, if you think I'm doing terrible, why don't you tell me? Alexander holds out the rose, hoping that the bird will deliver it to Cosima. The nightingale takes the rose and heads for the castle once more. A white rose, how beautiful! It must be from Alexander. How I wish that I could see him with my own eyes, but Abdul will never allow it. He only risks capture by sending me these things, dear to my heart though they are. Fly elsewhere, my pretty friend. Do not endanger Prince Alexander again by taking tokens from his hand. Forgive me, Alexander, and forget me. I cannot return your love for fear that I shall never leave this castle again. And so now we see that Casima is indeed locked. Alexander Forever waits in and vain for Cosima's nightingale to return, but the bird does not. Could there be something wrong? Or does Cosima simply not welcome his attentions further? In the sad state of affairs, it is, I assure you. Now that we have done that, we've collected the water. I had feared this. Um, let us make one last check. Alexander is carrying an old, battered hunter's lamp. The lamp contains sacred water, baby's tears, and fountain water. Uh, oh. I guess we want the eye again. I'm sorry. Alexander is carrying a book. We haven't been to the river Styx yet. That's going to be something for later. River Styx. Hmm. Oh, that was not what I intended. I apologize. I just need to make sure I've got this spell correct. Falling water. We have that. We got that on the beast's isle. Once vile sacred water we obtained on the mountain of the sacred uh, mountain, the Isle of the Sacred Mountain. Oh God! And the few drops salt water, not from the sea, are of course. I must speak this incantation. Alexander prepares to enchant the hunter's lamp with the Make Rain spell incantation. Clouds of thunder, shafts of light, come and sup with me tonight. Waters three have I for tea, brew a tempest now for me. The lamp in Alexander's hand gives a little perk. He hopes the spell works, despite his makeshift teapot. <laughs> it is a teapot indeed. Worry not. We are on to our next adventure. And though you might think that was a very hastily done spell, 
that can't do us any good. Alexander pulls out his magic map. We shall see what happens now as we go to the Isle of the Mists. I am so excited Alexander about feels a strange pulling sensation. This particular ordeal. I've gotten used to the game interrupting me, if you can't tell. Uh, but I'm very excited. Ah! Great God! Did you see that? The man just appeared from nowhere. Perhaps he was sent by the spirits. I see no boat. He is an intruder, no matter how he got here. Grab him! Not again. <laughs> Look, I'll leave. It's no problem. I think not. Let's go. And so we have found ourselves in another caper. Alexander is frozen at the spectacle before him. Robed figures are gathered around a bonfire. Some mystical ceremony is taking place. But as to its purpose, Alexander has no clue. We found a trespasser on the beach, Archdruid. Uh-oh. Archdruid. Now what has Alexander wandered into? This must be the foreigner we were warned about. How appropriate that he should come during our rain festival. Place him in the sacrificial cage. Wait! I must rescue the princess! There's an ancient druid saying, a man who would save others must first save himself. Alexander is pushed into the confining wicker cage. Cage is swung out over the bonfire. Alexander starts to feel a little warm. The bottom of the cage is getting uncomfortably hot. This cage is really hot. Fire in the cage. Alexander pulls out Beauty's old slave clothes, desperate to beat out the flames. The flame is extinguished, but the clothes themselves burn to cinders. Alexander won't be able to keep the cage from igniting for long. The heat and movement must have jarred something. Something that Alexander's carrying is starting to jiggle around. Something's really percolating. The water in Alexander's lamp is hot. It's just about boiling. Alexander feels a drop. It starts to rain. nature wizard by the sacred oak let him down i must apologize for our rude welcoming committee we've been feeling inhospitable ever since the winged ones stole our sacred miniature oak tree Besides, Wizir al Hazred sent a message that we were to watch out for a highly dangerous foreign assassin. I assume you are the one he meant. I'm sure I'm precisely who he meant. I assure you, I mean to harm no one, unless that person threatens the princess. I'm sorry to have disrupted your ceremony, but I'm running out of time. What is it that you seek? The Oracle on the Isle of the Sacred Mountain told me I should speak to you about the Realm of the Dead. She told me of two souls and unrest there that I might be able to free. Free souls in the Realm of the Dead? You're mad! The souls might be able to help me on my mission to save the princess. It's imperative that I do everything I can. The risks are not important. No. And yet getting yourself killed will hardly help the princess. But I will tell you what I know. Legend has it 
that it is the right of any human to challenge the Lord of the Dead in order to save his own life or the life of another already passed. But the knowledge of how to do this was lost centuries ago. I have only heard of one who tried it. A young knight who came to the land of the Green Isles from a distant land long ago. According to the story, he was determined to challenge the Lord of the Dead for the soul of his dead lover. It is said that he tamed the Lord of the Dead's horse, a black-winged, demon-hearted beast named Nightmare. Nightmare sometimes flies to the human world to feed on certain noxious plants. Those unfortunate enough to see her are glad to escape with their very souls intact. Somehow, the knight captured Nightmare and rode off on her back, supposedly to the realm of the dead. But neither the knight nor his lover ever returned. If there was a means for challenge, it was lost with the knight. I see. Can you tell me anything about the Lord of the Dead? Ah, that is a blacker matter still. To the Druids, he is Samhain, Lord of coldness and despair. Samhain was once a man like you or I, but he insulted the gods and was sentenced to rule the underworld. Immortal he is and mateless, robbed of sleep, Robbed of movement, robbed of companionship. It is said that he hates all mortals even more for the mortality that he lost. That is all I know. Interesting. I shall remember. Now look how the oak embers of our bonfire still glow hot despite the rain. If you are bent on your course, You'll need courage that's just as impervious to the chill. <sighs> May your luck last longer than your storm, brave one. May it indeed. Thank you, Archdruid. And with that, the druids leave us to our own device. As soon as this last one's off the screen, we may continue upon the journey that, upon which we have set forth. Forth. Alexander scoops up some of the red-hot embers in the ancient human skull. And now we are done here. Though our lives almost were forfeit, it seems we go further into the depths of things. Alexander pulls out his magic map. Of life and death. What lies in between. Alexander feels a strange pulling sensation. And what lies outside these lines. And with that, folks, I am going to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. So by this time, the episode prior should be that of the lesser ending. I hope you have enjoyed that as well. We move on to the full ending now. And... And all the dust in the game as a bonus. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and I hope you will continue to enjoy. I will see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.